We can go find the shofar. Good morning. We're trying to find my shofar. It's a new month, and it's I have Jessica month. here, and I know y'all are happy month. that Jessica is here. Hey, everybody. Yes. Woohoo! Good morning. So Good I morning. am just going to pray for a few minutes, and then I'm going to scoot over and let Jessica tell you about what, the new month that we're in, and she'll pray with you through that as she gets to certain parts. So this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful uh prayer session and and learning session about the new year so we can understand there you go my husband found the shofar yes, so sure we're gonna have some shofar here today yes we so are. far so good so far so show, good. Show far, show good. <laughs> so we're gonna have some <laughs> shofar today holy spirit i just love good you morning. so much i thank yes. you lord for an opportunity to pray this morning i thank you lord that jessica's here and Pastor, Pastor Jessica, Pastor Donnie's here, Pastor Bob's here. We got all the pastors got here. <laughs> and um, I thank it's you, Lord. It's a good morning. It is a good morning. It I is. thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to pray on this new month. And what is this the month of? Elul. Elul. The month of Elul. This is the month of the field. This right? is the month of the field. The king is in the field. The king. <gasps> woo, so good. The king is in the field. Yes. So he's here. He's here to help us. He he's here to help us gather the harvest. He's here to help us in all that we do. So, Lord, we yes. just thank you that you are in the field today. Yes, you are, are in our field yes, today. Yes, you are. You're in our city. Help us. You're in our nation. You're in our state. You're in our backyard. You're yes. in our. You're you're on our land. You're on you're on the land of our hearts. You're on our children. We yes. just honor you today. We honor you today. We honor you today. Uh, I thank you, Lord, for women that are faithful to pray every morning. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for women that are faithful to pray every week. I want to encourage you right now, ladies, to just share the broadcast. <clears throat> We're going to talk about a lot of things, pray yeah. about a lot of things today. Yeah. This is going to be a day where many of you are going to be healed. The yes. King is in the field. Good morning, yes. Anita. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning, Joyce McCombs. Good morning, Esmeralda. Good morning, good morning, Pam Whitfield. I love it when you ladies tell me where you're from. I good know, morning, that's Dixie so cool. Hansi, All over uh, the Hansen. Place. Good morning, Teresa. Uh, good morning, uh, Fawn. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Destiny Van Winkle. Good morning, Diane. Good oh, morning, nice. Connie. Lord, I just thank you for blessing these yes. ladies as they come on this morning. Let them feel your presence in such a powerful Amen. way. Holy Spirit, we adore you. Yes, we adore we you. Ladies, I just <laughs> want do. you to raise your hands across wherever you are in America and just say, Lord, we adore you this we morning. You. We give you praise. We give you honor. Yes. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for coming and being with us. Yes. Every time we set our voice and our hearts towards you, Lord, yes. you always come. You always talk to us. We ask you, God, to reveal to us what is on your heart today. Yes. God, let us pray about what's important for you what you want us to pray about today let us let us let us spend this whole time god just just coming into perfect communion with your will your purpose and your plan and lord i know that all of these ladies have needs many of them have physical needs some of them have financial needs some of them have uh, marriage needs some of them have children needs some of them have i mean there's just everything business needs there's all kinds of things represented but i just believe as we worship the king today yeah. as we talk about what is on his heart today that your needs are going to supernaturally be be met the byproduct of focusing on the lord is you know the bible says seek ye first the kingdom well it really means just when you get into the presence of god allow the presence of god not that we can't say what our needs are we can we have an opportunity with the father but sometimes i just want to get in his presence and i just want to worship him and i just want to hear what's on his heart and i feel like this is one of those mornings that if we will just worship him and 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 just come into agreement with what's on his heart that many of you will get the answer supernaturally. I prophesy the answer supernaturally to what you need and what you're believing God for. Yeah. That is going to be the byproduct of today. So, Lord, I just thank you as we uh, study Elul today, as we learn, 
as we pray, as we seek you today, that, that supernaturally every body will be healed. Yes. Supernaturally finances will, will, will just uh, appear. And more than enough, you're not going to be in lack or barely get by, but you're going to have more than enough. You're going into a more than enough season. And so I call forth more than enough. I call Amen. forth every business prosperous, yes. every position, job position prosperous. I call forth raises, bonuses, uh, investments. That I call forth monies uh, that you didn't, even, you didn't even count on. Houses you didn't build and crops you didn't plant. Mm -hmm. Because that's just how good God is. That's he just is. how good God is. So, Lord, we just love you with all of our heart. And I'm going to turn this over to Jessica so that she can start teaching you, and then we'll stop through, uh, you know, every, when, is, when the time is right and pray. Yes, and pray, 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 pray. Um, I'm looking on my phone right here because this is where I put all my notes. Because yes. every, every time somebody says, where are you reading from? From my notes on my phone. <laughs> Woohoo! This is an exciting month. It is. We have made it through the month of Av. Now, yeah. Av was considered the narrowest month of the year. Yeah. And so we made it through that. And Thank remember, you that God. was that exactly. Was a, yeah. It was a tough one. It was a tough there one. There was some intense spiritual warfare because it was like he's narrowing our focus. And that's what was happening this last month. Yes. And he was cutting away things that didn't need to be there and stuff like that. And, and we had the opportunity to choose him or to shrink back. Remember, wow. that was the month of either you transform you transfigure or you disintegrate and and it was tough it was i mean tough. there was some major spiritual warfare going on for all of us i know i know for me so i'm sure for for you too but the great news is is that we've made it through of and guess what now poof, we're into the wide open month of the year this is the month of the field wow this is also considered the last month of the civil year and that is super duper important because the civil year the civil year there's two different ones this would be considered the sixth month of the religious but the six, this is the last month and we'll get into all that later the last month of the civil year and so we're about to enter into new year so it's kind of wow. like this is our december okay you know we're about to enter into the new year january uh, to january yes but it's just like god to pack this last month full of prophetic insight because he's such a good god that he gives us the strategies that we need to be successful and to be victorious wow. because that's how he wants us to live. He wow. wants us to live from glory to glory to glory. Yes. And the cool thing is, as we learn about his calendar and we learn how to walk in his ways and in his timing, yes. then he, he gives us the strategies. He gives us the blueprint for what to do. So oh, that's nice. kind of what we're going to talk about today. Elul is considered one of the most powerful months of the year. Now, the, the reason for that is because you have to consider this uh, this is, it's, it's like spiritual work days. It's like he's walking around with us wow. in our field and he's showing us and pointing out wow. different things that either, maybe we tilled this one too much and he's saying, Hey, just chill on that one for a little bit. Let's go over here. Look, see all these weeds happening in this field mm -hmm. right here. And maybe that's the, 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 the field of your children, you know, and maybe that's the field of your family. Maybe that's the field of your finances. And he's going to show you some different strategies and different things uh, for that. But what he wants you to do is to get with him this month because the field is, it's the wide open place because this next month that he's taking us to is the throne room. Wow. It's the month where the high holidays are. It's the month of Yom Tor. It's the month of the, the blowing of trumpets. It's the uh, Rosh Hashanah, which is the, it's the new year, the head of the year, considered the day of the judgment yes. and things like that. And so he's wanting us to get things in order so that we can be prepared and be positioned when we're right before him in the throne room wow. for wow. what to do. Yeah, wow. it's a pretty important thing. So we're going to talk about lots of different stuff this month. So get ready. And we'll put all these notes on for you so that you'll be able to see them. Because I'm a visual person. I like to be able to see things and not just hear stuff. But this is what we're doing right now. So it's the last month of the civil calendar. But before we talk about that, before we even get into the month, let's talk about because this is getting to be the end of the year. Because this is the last month of the year. Let's talk for just a second about the year. Now, a lot of you know that we're in a decade. We're in the decade of 5780, okay? And eight, that's in the Hebrew year. And in 5780, 80 symbolizes the letter pay, which is mouth. And so it has everything to do with decreeing. That's why 
that's why we're doing a whole lot of decreeing. Mm -hmm. That's why it's like all of our declarations during this whole entire decade, it's like they're taking on an apostolic dimension because there, there is something powerful coming out of our mouth. And that's why we have to make sure that our mouth is lined up according to his word and not just what we think and not our, let our emotions speak, but let the truth of his word speak because our words actually create atmospheres around us. So we okay. have to be very careful. So we're in the decade of the year 5780. Now we're in this year right now that we're coming to the end of is 5781. And the one at the end is symbolized by the Hebrew letter Aleph, which means leader, which means the strong leader, which means God. So this entire year we have heard the voice of God, yes. the voice of Father God speaking to us. Yes. It's yes. a very big deal. He's speaking to us, but we're about to enter at the end of this next month, which is going to be September 6th. We're going to enter into 5782. The two is symbolized, it, it refers to the sun, it refers to Jesus, it refers to the letter bet, which means house, which means tent, which means he's taking us into that, which means the sun is going to speak. So let me show you some things that God has revealed to me about that because it's so cool. He's talking about his house, his tent, his dwelling, that's going to be a place of refuge for us. So to me, that shows me that there's going to be something that's going to possibly come down in the world, in the natural, but yet his children, his people, we're going to be able to run into him and wow. be safe. Yes. A place of refuge. And so we need to know that. We need to not let fear and unbelief try to come in and steal our peace because no. he is the God of peace and he is showing us we can run into him. At all times, of course, we can run into him, but he is showing us that no matter what is going on in the world, that we can run into him and his house is going to be a house of refuge. Now, not only, I don't think, not only does that mean like physical church houses, you know, cause it's kind of, isn't it kind of wild that it's like people are trying to shut churches down yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, and, yeah. and God is like, no, 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 that's my house of refuge. That's my house of peace. But also we are. Like as we walk through H-E-B and as we walk through different things like that, we are, we are the peace. house of peace for the people that are around us. And don't think it unusual when you're walking in the grocery store shopping that people are drawn to you. Because as you learn to rest in him and as you learn to um, just to be in that peace, he it's like the spirit of God just oozes out of you and people come to you and you don't even know why. I can't wow. tell you how many people I've prayed for in H-E-B that I don't even know. Yeah. But you can just, you can just discern and just let God lead you in things like that. But the year of 5781, that was the year of the father's voice symbolized by the number one. This coming year, it's all about fathers and mothers, which is symbolized by the number one to make room for the voice of their sons and daughters. Wow. This is time, and I know you've been praying for your kids. I've been praying for my kids. I know you ladies out there have been praying for your kids too. This is the year coming up right now that our sons and daughters are going to arise and their voice is going to be heard. New prophetic voices that are coming forth from, uh, from our children. And it's so interesting because one of um, one of our kids just recently was uh, prophesied over by Ivan Tate. He came yeah. to our church, and he was speaking. And this is like our youngest kid. His name is Jake. And uh, and some of you ladies who were at Portland and Oregon, y'all were praying for him on that night. Yeah, it was so amazing, and we've just seen amazing things. So I thank you for praying for him. But Ivan doesn't even know Jake or anything, and he prophesied over him that he was going to do even more things than his mother and father. And I'm like, that is the coolest thing ever because that's what we're believing for our children. Right. We're believing that they are going to do go, way yes. more. They're going to go way above anything that yes. we have done. And this yes. is the year for that. So I want you to pray into that today. Pray into your children and decree and declare the goodness of God over them and that they are going to do abundantly more, more than, than what than we, we could ever think. Ask think. That they are going to, they're going to be so in tune to the voice of God. It's going to be amazing. We're going to pray and decree that our children will hear the voice of the Lord, that our children will act on and receive the voice of the Lord, that our children will be bold and courageous and steadfast when it comes to carrying out the yeah. instructions and the voice of the Lord that, that God has given them. In fact, there's one thing that I had found, Callie. I found this on Facebook and it was just anonymous. Several different people had shared this, but I thought this was so good. And I'm going to post it at the end of this broadcast, but this is what it says. It says, our kids were born for such a time as this. 
Don't feel sorry or fear for your kids because the world they're going to grow up in is not what it used to be. God created them and called them for the exact moment of time that they're in. Their life wasn't a coincidence and it wasn't an accident. So raise them up to know the power they walk in as children of God. Train them up in the authority of his word. Teach them to walk in favor, knowing that God is in control. Empower them to know that they can change the world. Don't teach them to be fearful or disheartened by the state of the world, but hopeful that they can do something about it. Yes. Every person in all of history has been placed in the time yes. they were in because yes. of God's sovereign plan. He knew yes. that Daniel could handle the lion's den. He knew David could handle Goliath. He knew Esther could handle Haman, and he knew Peter could handle the persecution. He knows that your child can handle whatever challenge they face in their life. He created them specifically for it as they lean on him. Wow, Don't beautiful. be scared for your children, but be honored that God chose you to parent the generation that's facing the biggest challenges of our lifetime. Rise up to that challenge. Raise Daniels and Davids and Esthers and Deborahs and Peters. God isn't scratching his head wondering what he's going to do with this mess of a world. No. He has an army he's raising up to drive back the darkness and make him known all over the earth. And that's our children. Don't let your fear steal the greatness that God places in them. I know it's hard to imagine them as anything beside our sweet little babies. And we just want to protect them from anything that could ever be hard on them. But they were born for such a time as this. Yeah. They were born to they face born. what they were born to face. Exactly. And as long as we teach them and trust God, they'll be, they will face it. That's exactly under it. Under the grace and power of God. That's exactly it. And I promise we're getting to it a little bit. I think this is so important. Listen to this. From now until the Day of Atonement, which is Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year. It's 40 days. So why don't we bombard heaven for these next 40 days? Starting for today. our children, starting today. For Actually, last night, starting for our children. Because 40, I was looking up the number 40 in the Bible, and 40 is not only a number of trial and testings, but it's a number for a generation. Wow. So don't you think that is super amazing prophetic? Wow, We're entering wow. to the year 5782, which is the year of sons and daughters rising up in their prophetic voices. And we, we're on watch right now. You know, we're not supposed to be our children's friend necessarily, especially if they're still younger. We're right. supposed to, we're, we're guardians over them and we're there. We're a protection over them, I especially the, ever the younger friend. ones. And <laughs> so it's like, we've got to bombard heaven yes. for them yeah. over the next 40 days. It's very significant that we pray yes. for 40 days for this next generation. I think that's so important. This is a time of spiritual work days. Like, I mean, we need to pray like that. We have never prayed before and just lay out their names before God. In fact, lay out their names right here on this broadcast right now. And then we can all lay hands on our phones yes, and we can just yes, bring all of our children yes, up before yes. God because we are decreeing yes. and declaring that they are going to hear the voice of God. Let's They're going to walk. Right They're going to walk in the plan and the purpose yes. of God for their lives. Yes. So we thank you for that yes, right now. Lord. Holy Spirit. We, we just have that you move our on our children, no yes, matter Lord. if they're still in the womb, oh, no so matter if they're grown and old. Of, of yes. Jessica's and Donnie's. All of those kids, all, all of the grandkids. Yes. Holy Spirit, we just yes, ask right Lord. now that you will move on them, move on their on their souls, move on their hearts, on their minds, on their emotions, God, and let their let their plans and their desires line up with your desires, God. Just woo them and call call them to you. We decree and declare yes, that no matter where Lord. they find themselves, even if they found themselves in jail cells, even if they find themselves strung out right now, God on drugs, God, we just ask that you just pull them back in, pull them, out. Pull pull them, them back out, in, right the pull them into your plan yes. and your purpose, because this is yes, the month Lord. that we gather the scattered sheep. This is the month that's a point month yes, for Lord. us. God, it's a point month for them. God, we just thank you for that right now, for having your hand on our children. And we speak life into every single one of our oh, children. Jesus today. There's special grace right now for the gospel to be preached throughout the generations. And that's what the cool thing is. It's like, even like with Cindy McGill, who was in Portland, Oregon, she just, God has been downloading strategies on her of how to reach a generation yes. that is basically a godless generation that they, they don't even know anything, right. you know, kind of stuff. And so there's all kinds of strategies coming down. And so we just, we need to take that Take a hold of that and run with that yes, this year because yes. there is some major stuff with that. This is a new beginning. There's no more circling around the mountain anymore. This is the time that we ascend. This is the time that we go up. And he's going to keep revealing more and more and more to us about this year. The, the, the directive is to stay fixed on him and he's going to show us what to do. So the next cool thing, Kelly, wow. because I know this is a whole lot, but you can go back and listen to this again. At the end of this Hebrew month, not only do we enter into a new year, but we enter into the seventh 
the seventh year cycle of the Shemitah. And so that's a time of divine rest. And I know we've talked about that before, but the Shemitah, what that does is it bears witness that the land and the earth belong to God and it's entrusted to us as stewards, but it declares that God is first and he is foremost above every single realm, above every every bit of money, every bit of eco economics, the possessions, political wow. parties, everything. Wow. And it's, it, it's a year that's set aside and it compels us. We're supposed to turn away from the worldly realms and turn to the spiritual because it cleanses and it wipes away. And to me, this, this is a very significant one because this actually is this coming Shemitah, which will happen September, start September 6th, uh -huh. all the way through September, I think, 26th of 2022. It marks the 70th year since the first one in the modern state of Israel. Wow. And so that means this is the 10th Shemitah cycle. And what that means is if when you look at the numbers and you break those down, seven is the number of rest, which is spiritual um, completion and holiness. It also symbolizes the messianic age. Okay. And then 10 represents divine order. Okay. So 70, when you put that together, it represents completion and wholeness. It represents wow. the real thing. So there's something... There's something coming wow. that he is wanting his people to be prepared wow. for. And I'm not sure what that looks like yet. Yes. I'm not sure what that looks like is going to go on in the world. But the one thing I know is that I can rest in him. Wow. I can rest in him. And so that's why during this season coming up, we have to have our eyes fixed on him and not on what is going on in the world. Right. You cannot let fear and unbelief come in and just take you off guard. We have got to stay safe. We've got to understand and know that we are safe inside of his tent. Okay. His tent, his dwelling, his house. That's us. <coughs> it's a place of refuge for yes. us. It's a place of refuge. We're so it's a big deal. House. We are safe in his house. So I know that's a whole lot, but now we're going to go into the month of Elul because this is the month of God's favor. Yes. <laughs> How awesome is that? Receive that. Say, I, I receive God's I receive favor. God's favor. I receive God's favor. Well, you know, we preached on favor this last Did week. Did you? We preached well, on see, favor. there you go. I, I was in, I was in, in the time and it was you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's so cool because that, that's what God does. He that's does. Amazing. He reveals it to yeah, us. Yeah, Bob and I preached on the favor of the Lord this Isn't that week. That's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, with all the craziness going on in the world today, I'm so very thankful that what he does do is he reveals to us, just like he's revealing to you. Even yeah. if you don't know about his calendar, he's still, still revealing he's to still it. Still revealing. He's, he's still, revealing. He's revealing. He's not showing. schizophrenic. He's not. It's <laughs> like he's a, he's a psych psych. God of cycles. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And so it's like he knows. And if we're in tune with him, he's going to download he's gonna, he's things gonna on download us. It. And then it's just super cool when this stuff comes along so and you're just like confirmation. Yeah, this is the month of God's favor. Wow. It is. I know. It's 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 amazing. Okay, so this is the scripture that go, kind of goes along with this month. It's Ecclesiastes 5 verse 9. And this is what it says. After all, a king who cultivates the field is an advantage to the land. Now, I want wow. you to think about that. I'm going to read that one more time. Listen to this. This is Ecclesiastes 5, 9, and this is what it says. After all, a king who cultivates the field is an advantage to the land. You know, most of the time, a king is up in his palace, and kings normally don't come down to the land. But back in, in, back in the day when kings were everywhere, this is what would happen. Once a month, the king would come down to the field. And, you know, most of the time when you're going to visit a king, there's a lot of protocol. There's a lot of you have to do things the right way and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff like that. But this is a time when the king literally came down and he set up a tent in the middle of the field. And there was no appointments necessary. There was no protocol. Anybody and everybody could come and have total access to the king wow. for a whole entire month. And what that does is that's mirroring what Jesus did for us when he wow. came down from the throne. He came down from heaven. Wow. He came down from his dwelling. And he came down 33 years. He was down here on the earth with us in bodily form. Yes. And we all had access. Yes. And we all have access to him 24-7, yes. 365 days a yes. year. He's, this is a reminder. This, this is, is a, a remind. reminder yes. that we have access to him. But during this particular time this particular month he is wanting to walk around in the fields with us but and, but and we have to understand too what are we talking about when we're talking about fields we're talking about my life we're talking right. about things that concern me we're talking about things that i put effort into which would be my ministry it would be a, my family it would be my friends it would be my husband it would be you know just anything my, my job Anything that I put effort into, right. he is interested in that. He is interested he in is that. He is interested in that, and he wants to walk around with me and all of that stuff. 
And so listen to this, listen to this scripture, John 1, 14, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten, full of the Father, full from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word dwelling in that verse is actually the word for tent or tabernacle. And that's just telling us that Jesus left his tent and left the tabernacle up there. He came down and lived with us. So this is what we're going to say. This is what we're going to decree right now. We're going to say, I have divine access to my king. I have divine access to my king. He is concerned with everything that concerns me. He is concerned with everything that concerns me. He left his heavenly throne for me. He left his heavenly throne for me. His great love for me through the cross gives me access. His great love for me through the cross gives me access. I am reconciled <laughs> to Father God. I am reconciled to Father God. I have access to my king. I have access to my king. 24-7. 24-7. 365 days a year. 365 days a year. His spirit lives in me. His spirit lives in me. And seals me forever. And seals me forever. Because see, this is a divinely appointed time for him to come into our field. And he wants to surprise us with his presence. Yes. He wants to be in every single solitary part. You know that little part of your field, that little part of your heart that you said, mm, nah. He's like, no, I want to go in there too. I want to go see what's going on. Because there's some healing that needs to take yes. place right there. And he wants to heal. Because he wants us whole and complete as we enter into the new year. As we enter into the high holidays. As we enter into the throne room time. Okay. He wants us complete yes. and complete healed everything in order everything where it's supposed to be everything tended to and so during these next 40 days basically this is spiritual work days for us this is time for us to work with god he's going to come in and surprise you in all those places that you thought he wasn't with you you know those situations mm -hmm. and things that you're like god's not here he's, he's going to show up he's going to show up there in a profound way and manifest yes. his presence yes and he's going to help you through the things that you think are impossible He's a good God. Wow, yes, he's he a is. good God. Yes, he's a he very is. good God. He's a very good God. Now, the big thing, Kelly, is what do we do when he does come into our field? What do we do when he does surprise us with his presence in a certain way? The way to show that we have relationship with him is we run into his arms. Yes. We run into him. We don't shrink back. We don't we don't run away. We don't turn away. We say, Holy Spirit, what do you want? Yes. Hold it. What do you want? What do you want to do in us right now? And allow him, allow him to come into your field. Into allow field. him to do what it is. Yes. He's showing you. He's like he's pouring out his love yes. on you. And the super cool thing, there's another scripture. There's several scriptures in the Bible that this, there that the word Elul lines up and, you know, what do you call those things? Acrostic uh -huh. kind of stuff. Uh -huh. And there's one in the Song of Solomon. And I wrote it out. I ripped out a page from your book over there. And I know this is going to look backwards to you online, but do you see the things that I highlighted right there? Do you see these, these letters right here? That spells out Elul going down. And what this says is, this is Song of Solomon and it says, I am my beloved's and he is mine. Wow. I know. And that's what he's wow. showing. Us. I, <laughs> I know. It says, yeah, Annie Lee Doty, Lee Doty Lee. Right there. And that's what it's saying. It's saying, I am my beloved's and he is mine. And you know the cool thing is that's what my wedding ring says. Wow. <laughs> wow. I know. Isn't that cool? So the king is in your field. He is inviting you to a special time of intimacy with him. All we got to do is just receive him. That was Song of Songs, chapter 6, verse 3. I am my beloved's, and my and beloved is, is mine. mine. Yes. And that's exactly what it is. So we can just pray into that. We can just pray that we receive the love of Abba Lord, Father. We yes. just thank you for that. Yes. Go for it, Callie. Lord, I just thank you that we're receiving your love <laughs> yes. today. We receive your love, and you have our love. Yes. And God, we just thank you that as, as we... Uh, approach the field today because yes. you're in our field, you're in our field. Uh, ready to talk to us about anything that we need yes god that we are just going to go boldly before your throne and boldly into the field knowing that you're there to hear our cry yep. and you're there to help us with anything that we have anything. need of. Yes. Anything that we have need of. Anything that needs to get fixed. Anything that needs to be prepared. Anything that needs to be harvested. Anything that needs to be tended to. You yep. are there to help us. This is the time to do it. This because is the we're time. getting ready to enter into the new year, yep. the throne room, and into a time of rest. So you have come down before the Ooh, time of good. rest. 
to help, help us, us with anything that yes. needs to be tended. Tended, yes. Tended. So, Lord, I just thank you for that. And I love your seasons yes. and your times. They're so I good. honor, God, we just honor this time of the field, yes. Alul. We honor, we honor everything. We honor the hard place. We yes. honor the wide place. We honor the, the narrow place. We honor the mountain. We honor the valley. We honor the seasons in your and your timetable and calendar, God. Yes. We honor all of the feasts, God. We honor you. Yes. We honor you. We honor your ways. We we love you. You are such an amazing God, amazing and we God. honor it today. Amazing okay. God. There's another scripture I want you to uh, to get that goes along with this month, um, because during this time, this is when Psalm 27 is read. So this is Psalm 27, verse 5 and 6. And I just want you to think about yourself. Think about you being in his tent while I'm reading these two verses to you. It says, For in the day of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. Wow. He will lift me up on a rock. Wow. And now my head will be lifted above my wow. enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. Wow. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. And that's Psalms 27, 5 through 6. See, as we open up ourselves to him this month, he's going to give us wisdom in how to navigate our fields. He wants to personally instruct us on every single level because he knows what makes our fields fruitful. Yes. And the whole point of everything is harvest. Yes. It's harvest for yes. our king. He's revealing to us, why are we doing doing yes. what we are doing yes. it should all be for the king and so he's going to go in and he's going to show us what things do we have like maybe a wrong motive on you know kind of stuff or what things do have we kind of jacked up a little bit with our thoughts and our imaginations and he's going to repair those things and he's going to maybe even plow those fields over again so that we can reseed wow so wow. that we can start sowing again correctly in those he's even going to surprise the enemy he's bringing us to a place of access this month he wants us to take spiritual account of our fields with him he wants us to show he wants him to be able to show us what it is that we need to do that he's incredibly excited to go walking in our fields with us. And how do I know that? Because the Bible tells me. Look at this. Song of Songs 711. It says, come, my beloved, let us go out into the fields. You know, it he reminds just me of the Garden the of Eden. Yes. He wanted to walk with them. He wanted every... to walk with them in the cool of the day. Yeah. So this in is their time to walk with Set them. Set aside time. Yep. That's wow. exactly what it is. Take a spiritual account. Assess the past year of our life. Because that's kind of what our field is. Our field basically is a representation of what all we did this year. And he wants us to take an account of that. You know, it's kind of like, that's where we get all the New Year's resolutions and stuff from. We kind of look back over our lives. Well, the cool thing is with his people, our calendar's like three months ahead of what the Gregorian calendar is. So we can get our act together and completely, totally organized. Before they. Before again. they, yes. He's just so good. Okay, now there's one more thing. And then I know it, it, this is long, but it's okay. Okay. One of the things that he wants us to take a look at this month, because this is the thing that kind of keeps us from, from really getting our fields right and for, from getting into his tent, is um, a spirit of mistrust. Wow. Because mistrust is a big thing right there. It's the field that causes you to wander, and you just kind of wander. Think about that. Think of a farmer just wandering around and never really getting anything done kind of stuff. And that is a spirit of mistrust. And that's wow. what the enemy tries to come in and plant, you know, that you don't belong and that you're not supposed to be there and this, that, and the other. And so he causes a spirit of mistrust. Um, and he is wanting to, to get that out of us Yes. this yes. month because a spirit of tr mistrust keeps you from connecting. It keeps you in your camp all alone. And that's not what God wants. God wow. wants us joined in together with each other. He never meant for us to live a solitary life. Yeah. You know, just think about it back in the garden of Eden. He saw Adam and Adam had no help meet. And so he said, I'm making Eve. He did not mean for us to live total isolated. He even established tribes. He established order. He wanted everybody to function in a community and a war unit for protection. Because if you think about it, you know, even he sent his disciples out two by two. We're, this is not supposed to be isolated life here. We're no. supposed to be all together. In a community. In a community. That's why, and I think that's why the enemy is hitting so hard on trying to make churches not meet together. Because the Bible even says, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves it's together, the especially as the day yes, you know, is approaching. And that's what the, the world system is trying to get us not to assemble but by putting fear and mistrust in us. Yes. And God is like, no, 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 come on, get that spirit gone. I need you to assemble together. Because think about a lion. A lion will come through and he picks off those that are straggling behind. 
he picks up the part that are the ones that are not a part of the group of the group of the pack. And so this is a this is a, a point month to get back in to get get rid of that. If you realize that you are, are living isolated and that that you are you it's a like vain imaginations come in, you know, with people. Everybody thinks everybody's thinking about them all the time. And that's not how that, that's not how it is. No. It's like people are dealing with their own stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? A lot of times. And so, Most so people's not, they're not thinking about you at all. No, but people are like, oh, that person's judging me. Well, no, the person's not even thinking of you. You know, they're thinking about something totally different. And so, um, just, just pray into that. If that is something that you realize that you're dealing with is mistrust and you realize that you're not connected and stuff, ask God to just get that, get rid of that. So you can get joined back in with what it is that you're supposed yes. to be doing kingdom-minded stuff. Yeah. This is the time to gather the scattered sheep. This is the time to get back into the church. This is the time to find your place in the order of the camp. This is the time of regrouping so that we can be safely under his tent, safely in, under, his, under his care. It's point month for that. And the th cool thing too about God is he is, he is really doing big time things with dreams and visions he right is. now, he big is. time. And not only just in, in our generation, but in our sons and daughters generation too. So listen to those dreams, yes. listen to those things. This is a month to fix things that are broken. Wow. But also this is the month God is going to reveal to you things that cannot be fixed He's going to give you the ability, the supernatural ability to release those things so that you can go on to the new. Wow. You can go on to what wow. it is that he has for you because wow. he's such a redeeming God. So yes. let him do that. This is the month also that complex systems, things that you have not understood of how in the world does this fit with this? Does this fit with that? It's all of a sudden going to come full circle and you're going to be like, oh, that's what you were doing, God. I had no idea that this was supposed to be connected with this. He's showing you all those things this month because he wants us to enter into the new year whole and complete with nothing missing, with nothing broken. He wants us to have things in order so that when we go into the throne room, that we are completely, totally positioned to do exactly what it is that he is going to commission us wow. to do. It's wow. a big deal. It's a big deal. So the king is in the field. Now, this, this month, the reason I had you go get your shofar out, because this month there's a very special shofar sound that okay. goes forth, okay? So I don't know if you've ever done this before, but this okay. is what you're going to do. Normally, you blow a shofar. So when you hear the shofar sound, there's four different ones that take place on this month, the month of Elul. So one of them is going to be a long, single blast, okay? okay. And that's going to be the one that we are crowning him as king. Okay. It's a coronation, okay? Then you're going to do three short whale-like blast and that is a time of repentance okay okay wah, wah, yeah wah, wah. that's okay. right and that's when you cry out to yeah. god from the depths of your soul yes. and you let the past failures go okay. he doesn't want us to go into the new month hanging on to the old he wants no. us to release those things so we're going to crown him as king first then we're going to repent before him and then we're going to there is three short blasts of alarm which is waking us up. It's like an alarm clock. It's okay. supposed to arouse us from, from our slumber. It's supposed to arouse us from our sleep. And then the last one is going to be a long final blast. And that one symbolizes the hope of redemption. Wow. Because that's what we're looking forward to, Callie. Yes. We are looking forward to the yes. hope of redemption. So the king yes. is in yes. your field. Yes. Let him come in there and yes. tend to what needs to be tended to. Yes. Don't tell him no, but give him complete and total access yes, because Lord. you are safe under the yes. tabernacle of his tent he is yes, your god lord. he is your yes, king lord. he is your lover and he loves yes, you lord. he loves you and he's not only equipping you but he's equipping your children because this is a time for our children to arise so we're going to go out of this today with the prayer blast on the shofar yes so the so first gonna... one you're going to do is a long single blast and this is when we're crowning him as king We thank you. Ooh, I feel that way. We thank you, King, for the hope yes, of our redemption. Lord, we thank you, you Lord. We for come the hope. into a lull. Yes. Woo. Yes. And I want to 
wants you to get your uh, communion. Oh, yeah. We're yes. also going to take communion this morning. And um, I wanted, uh, is Donnie here? I wanted Donnie to come in here. Donnie, I want you to come in here and, and prophesy over these ladies. Where's Donnie? Where's Donnie? Uh -oh. I'm telling Donnie to come in Tell here. Tell him to get up and come on. You. <laughs> there we go. Oh, thanks. Donnie, get up. Donnie's in there. He, Donnie's in there laying before the Lord. <laughs> yes, I don't know. He's coming. Come on. Donnie, you're coming to prophesy over these ladies. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to take communion today. I love Jessica, the month of Elul. I Isn't love the new year we're headed into. Yeah. I just declare that your the so king is in your field. Yeah. I declare everything is going to be reworked that needs to be yep. reworked. God, that you're going to have so much harvest going into the new year that you're yep. going to be able to rest. Yes. I call forth harvest in every area of our life. Yes. Lord, we thank you for your blood and your body. We thank you for the sacrifice on Calvary. God, we remember your body today, and we take yes. this in remembrance of you. Yes, we do. Lord, we thank you for your blood. And we take this in remembrance of you. Yes, Holy Spirit. Pastor Donnie. Uh-oh. Oh, come on, Pastor There's one Donnie. more Bible verse I'm going to leave with you. It's Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. And this is what it says. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked man forsake his way and the perverse man his thoughts. Yes. And let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He will abundantly, abundantly pardon. pardon. So Thank I just you. declare the blessing of the Lord yes, over you. Do. I declare yes. that you're going to hear the voice of God. You're going to obey the voice of God. And yes. you're going to walk in abundance yes. and freedom yes. and power yes. and anointing. There will be no mistrust. No. We will we will cleave unto the Lord, yes. and we will cleave unto our field that God has called us, and yes. we will not be fearful in any way, shape, form, mm -hmm. or fashion. I pray for America today. Yes. Lord, I thank you, God, for the revival that you have promised in, uh, across this country. Yes. I thank you for the pockets of revival that we're seeing that are exploding around America. I thank you, God, that this southeast Texas area is getting ready to literally explode with revival from Celebration yes. of Life to Life Church in Beaumont, uh, Port Arthur, Port Nation. Port Nations. Arthur, wherever we are. <laughs> Golden Triangle. Yes. <laughs> God, I just thank you that the, that the, the power of God is hitting these regions. Yes hitting Houston and all the outlying areas, hitting every state that's represented on this prayer yes. call this morning. And every country. And every country, every city. Yes. And Lord, we just declare the blessing of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor. And ladies, listen, I just love you so much. I want to encourage you. Now, listen, we've got our next. Uh, Kentucky has been postponed. Kentucky's been postponed. But St. Louis, on hervoicemovement.com, her, the St. Louis uh, Her Voice event is up. Go get signed up. And then the Colorado one is up. So go get signed up. We love you so much. God bless you. We will see you tomorrow. I'm getting ready to go blow the shofar over Pastor Donnie. Yes. <laughs> and he's going to have to listen to that for the next 20 minutes. We love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that finished.